What up, players? Necromancer Lewis up in this mud. Check out my sweet new ride. But today, we're going to be talking about doing one of these. Kaboom! It's an ogre lead belcher from the ogre's kingdom's army. Hey, I was talking! And today I'm going to teach you how to paint one up. Ah, oh, you damn kids! So stay tuned and enjoy the show. Get off my lawn! Alright my friends, let's get started with painting up this lead belcher. First thing we're going to do is paint up his uh, the tips of his boots with bolt gun metal. Then the uh, actual boots themselves with Citadel Foundation's Calvin Brown. And up to the pants, we're gonna paint the pants because we're doing Nuln colors from the city-state of Nuln. Nice, even, chaos black. And just for you guys, brand new brush. It's not new, I bought it a long time ago, um, but it's just been sitting in my brush jar. You can see I had to uh, green stuff the seams with the can, and I'm still not sure if I if uh, I got them all. For these lead belchers, those are the the worst mold lines. I noticed too when I was putting together these ogres that um, excuse me that the um, mold lines around the shoulders and neck area tend to be pretty harsh. Okay. <clears throat> I have my um my timer on so that I can make sure that I don't go over. Otherwise it's just gonna cut off. Brown for the boots. Sorry, with the with the cannon, kind of throws off the camera's focus every now and then. Oops. I've got my trusty cup of water next to me to thin down my paint. My painter's palette. Uh, not that ogres are easy because there's, they are in no means an easy army to paint and there's so much you can do creatively with them, but um, I would like to point out that in my opinion, if you are a beginning player in Warhammer Fantasy and you really want to get into the painting side of it, or even if you don't, if you just want to get a quickly painted army on the board, ogres seem to be the way to go. 
because the models are a lot bigger, so you can see what your paint is doing. Um, <clears throat> you can really e refine and hone your technique. Because it's not as, the models are bigger, they're more forgiving, essentially. You have a bigger space to see how the colors mix and work off of each other. I mean, my first army that I painted seriously after I got back into the army was orcs and goblins, and you can see that all of my night goblin eyes are just pools of blood red. Oh, sorry. And, um, because I, I, I got them all over the place, I didn't think to touch them up after I couldn't get the, the red eyes correct. Um, so, with the bigger heads and the faces and the bigger eyes, it's a lot easier for me when I'm painting ogres to see, oh, this is how you paint the iris and the pupil, and um, you can kind of get a, get a feel for it before you move on to other smaller infantry size models. Okay, you can also paint the um, belt and the pants uh, that is hanging, the, the part of the pants that are hanging, the trousers that are hanging over the belt in black because it really would be too hard to paint um, the inside part of the belt a different color you can if you want but for our purposes there's I, I deck this guy out with so much stuff like just to stab in some Kemri brown or Calton brown underneath is really not necessary a little brown a little bit of brown there Again, you don't need to be perfect. You don't ever need to be perfect. You can always fix something. Any point in the painting process, even if you're doing your final highlights and you mess up, don't ever get discouraged. Okay. Next thing we're gonna do is we are going to paint the gut plate, Calton Brown, and since that's part of the belt too. You don't have to worry about that for now. We'll come back and we'll fix that in a bit. Okay, so Calton Brown for the gut plate as well as the cannon. And this is gonna be the base of your gold. Dirty gold. Da -da dirty. <clears throat> yeah, so this guy we're gonna call Long Tom going to be the name of his canon, so that's going to be his name that he adopted after he uh, adopted the canon. This is the name of the canon back when it was a part of the Imperial Army. There you go. Nice full even coverage with the down enough. <clears throat> yeah, thing with foundation paints, it's, you know, they're great, you just gotta make sure that they're not too thick. For the base coats though, it's not so bad. Right there, I got too much on my brush. Too much, too much, too much. Oop, get in frame. Hmm. 
Ooh, I feel dirty. Okay. Liquid green stuff. Deep down, I wonder if Fine Cast is just a ploy by GW to set up the demand in the market for liquid green stuff. It was just a very expensive, elaborate ruse. Like, nobody's gonna buy this liquid green stuff to use with our metal models. We need to create a product that's so bad. There's so much miscasts that you'll need liquid green stuff. <clears throat> Alright, so I'm running out of time on my camera, so I'm going to cut there, I'm going to finish painting, I'm going to cut filming right now, I'm going to finish painting the cannon, and we'll get back to you in just a little bit. Okay, as we continue, we're going to be painting on different alternating colors, and this really depends on how you set your model up and how you glue them together, but um, I set mine up with a lot of bags, and um, just with the colors, I've decided that the known colors are red and black and uh, they have spot colors of creamy white and this dark Calton leathery brown. So what I've decided is that I'm gonna paint this bag Calton brown. Um, I'm going to paint the bones inside, denim stone. This hook is gonna be bolt gun metal. The, um, the, the head of this mace is gonna be tin bits, which is a new color, so let me show it to you right there. Dark metallic pigment. Then I'm actually going to paint this bag that holds all his cannonballs mechrite red. And I'm going to paint the handle of this mace. I'm going to paint it Calton brown. And Deneb stone for the uh, handle strap. I am also going to paint these little threads that are holding his pants together in mechrite red as well. So, going from the philosophy of painting from the lower, lowest layer up to the top, so as not to um, cover what you just painted as much as possible, I'm going to start with the mace. M A dollar sign E. Bad boy records. See, normally if you were painting this in a different unit, if you're painting this guy in a different unit and he had this accessory on his back, then you could paint this bag any color you wanted. If it was a different unit in the Empire, you could paint it like uh, white or yellow or you know whatever color that unit would be. If you were painting this as a part of the regular Ogre Kingdoms, then it would be fine just to paint it in brown. though. What I'm even thinking of doing now that I have this idea in my head could be to uh, maybe add a little label on the um, on the bag itself. Maybe make like it was a standard for another unit or for maybe like the artillery train like it was a banner or something. Uh, it's really hard about painting banners freehand though when you don't have an embossed surface. Is that you have to take into account all the folds. Yeah, so this is the boring part. Base coats. Base coats are so boring and discouraging. Usually I'm listening to um, a battle report from Bella Lost Souls now, or Blue Table Painting Studio Updates, or some of my friends' videos like General Splatten or Mata. A girl painting, or the great Jojo Man. The good thing about this community is that, you know, we're all over the world, but um, 
sharing each other's tips and inspirations and stuff. It's just really what motivates us and what we got accomplished. It's really inspiring. To me, anyways, it's inspiring to hear what other painters and modelers are up to. Yeah, sorry, a lot of times I go to your videos, everybody um, out there who's watching this, I've, I'm, chances are if you put content on YouTube and it has to do with Warhammer or 40k or or uh, any any kind of hobby like that, chances are I've probably watched one of your videos and I'm sorry if I didn't leave a comment or hit the like button. Because most of your stuff out there, people I really like. Did you guys get A and E? Did anybody see that miniseries? Stephen King's Bag of Bones with Pierce Brosnan a couple weeks ago. God, it was horrible. It was pretty bad. I mean, I remember when I was watching, when I watched it as a kid, it terrified me, freaked me out so much. I think that's why most people are scared of clowns. That movie. Tim Curry as Pennywise. Ooh. I remember afterwards I was like, that was a book? Dude, I gotta read it. And then I read it. And then I was no longer a boy. I became a man. So that book was pretty intense. What am I talking about? Scary clowns. Scary clowns. That's why I'm. That's why I'm including the skip to the next step section, so that uh, you don't have to listen to my stupid banter. <laughs> if you want to, you can just skip it. You're like, what's this guy talking about? Things, man. I'm talking about things. The things that connect us as a people, as a society. Killer clowns. <laughs> Yeah, that makes me think of another thing. Um, at one point, the, actually when I bought this army, like two years ago, when I bought this army, this battalion, in a box, uh, I had the idea to make a killer clown themed circus ogre army. And then uh, I was like, oh yeah, that's so funny. I'll make, I'll give them like yellow striped, yellow and white striped pants, like, like carnies and I'll make the um, I'll, I'll give them all clown faces make them look like just like really spooky spooky clowns and uh, it never happened and then I saw who was it somebody painted an army for a commission just recently and um, painted it up in that killer clown theme and I was like, yes, that is what I wanted to do. Was it Worthy Painting? Was it the guys over at Worthy Painting? Or, uh, I don't know. Somebody remembers, if it was you and you're watching this video, then I would shake your hand if I could, if I wasn't painting, because you made an awesome looking spooky army. Spooky white clown faces. That whole carny vibe. See, and then when somebody takes your idea, or not your, your idea, but like when somebody does the same thing you want to do, then it's like, oh man, I'll never be as good as that. Nothing I do will ever look that awesome, especially because now people will think that I'm copying. So it's like, gotta think of something else. So I just kept it in the back of my mind until just recently.
go. Now let's get onto the red. Okay, with red, I've noticed that you're, um, depending on how much you thin your paint, you're going to need to be careful because it's, it spreads really, really easily. Micrite red doesn't tend to cover as well as the other colors, so you might need to put more than one coat. And I see that my time is running out, I'm about to go over my limit, so I don't want my camera to shut off, so I'm going to cut here and give this first layer a little while to dry, and then I'll apply a second la layer, and we'll come back when that's done. Killer clowns, man. Okay, we're back now, and we are going to continue painting our model. We're going to do the skin now, and that is going to be painted in Talarn flesh. We're also going to paint the bandages under the armor on his forearms in Deneb stone. Oh, no, that's Camry Brown. Sorry about that. Deneb stone. That there, she, there she is. And then we're going to paint the actual plates of armor on his forearms and paint that with tin bits. Okay, is there anything else we want to talk about? Uh, we'll get to... Actually, we might as well talk about what we're going to paint um, the rest of the details for his head and his face. The hair on his mustache and little goatee are going to be Calton Brown. And the eye patch we're going to paint black with Chaos Black. We're also going to put the Chaos Black into uh, his mouth so that we paint it nice and dark. Then a stone is also going to be used to paint his teeth and the strap that holds the eye patch over his over his head is going to be painted in Mechrite Red. And we're also going to paint Mechrite Red the flame of the little matchstick and the matchstick itself we're going to paint Calvin Brown. So a lot of colors, but um, it's really pretty simple once you get going. First thing is the biggest area of the model, which is the Talarn flesh. One of the great things about painting base coats is that they don't need to be completely even or, uh, you know, none of your paint applications really need to be completely even and smooth until the end. But even before, as long as you keep your paints thinned down so they don't uh, clump while you're painting, then everything should be okay. So I'm just going to fly pretty quickly through this. Oh, sorry. Showing the cork, showing the cork. And if you make any mistakes, if you paint over anything you did, remember we're still in our base coats, so we can cover it up, especially if it happens to be the cannon piece. We haven't even painted the cannon gold yet, so it's no problem to clean up any mistakes you make. And I'm making a bunch just because I'm painting at an angle that I'm not used to.
So I found uh, I found Lewis's ride a while back. I bought Vampire Counts, uh, one of the battalions, and um, and I just put it away in storage because I was like, when I got home, I was like, why did I buy this? I don't even play Vampire Counts. It was just in the store, and I saw it, and I was like, ooh, gimme! And um, so it comes with a, ca a corpse card, if you don't know. Or uh, the current one does, anyway, not sure what the next iteration of the Vampire Counts Battalion box set will be like, but um, I, I thought at the time, this was a couple years back, that, hey, why am I keeping all these models in their boxes where they're just going to take up so much space? Why don't I conserve space by taking these sprues out of their boxes and packing up the sprues like stacking them up and keeping them packed away and uh, little did I know that when you put sprues on top of sprues on top of sprues sometimes little pieces of the model stick and come off and get lost and uh, that is exactly what happened I lost one of the four zombies pulling the cart and poor Lewis I'll never forgive you! Sorry. Douchebag. Hey. Why does he keep calling me that? Alright. I saw that I missed a little bandage. I'm gonna have to go back and get but that's alright. that it is time to stop this camera and start it up again so I'm gonna finish painting the bandages I'm gonna finish painting the uh, metal on the arms I'm gonna finish painting the hair the bandage the eye patch and uh, the face and then we'll come back to wrap up our base coats and move on to the washes okay we're back and we're uh, gonna get started on the cannon the gold and the cannon and the gut plate are the last things we need to paint then we can get started on our washes. So we're gonna be painting shining gold and it's not quite a dry brush, but we're gonna be painting, um, pretty much covering the entire cannon with a light application. I'm not even going to uh, water down the gold because it's so thin, it separates really easily. So, um, and then we're, I'm gonna be spreading it out kind of like uh, I wouldn't call it a dry brush, but it's one of these jobbies. This is the let's go, I got places to go, stuff to do method of applying paint. We're going to do the same thing with the gut plate.
Now while that's drying, we're gonna get started on the washes for the skin. And this is going to be in Oaken Flesh. Now when you get to washes, you wanna be careful because it's really easy to just apply them and let them pool. And thanks to gravity, pool in the recesses that are like um, in the lower part of the model and you want to make sure they're spread out the wash is spread out it doesn't really pool in one place so it's going to create a little little bubble of paint when you try to brush it away later Applying this everywhere to the model, you're gonna have to be turning the model in different angles in order to reach all of the areas, and that's fine. And like I said before, this to me is when the model really comes alive. It's like you begin to see shadows and real-life authentic shading and um, makes you think of these models as more than playing pieces but like little pieces of art that you are creating and if you're still with me right now then you've got to have some kind of appreciation for your figures which is awesome because a lot of the figures you see are unpainted or they belong to the the plastic gray chapter of Space Marines and that's no fun you can if you want you can leave a little bit more of the wash down near the hands because we're going to dirty those up with soot in a little while. There you go. Okay, now we're going to paint, while we're waiting for that to dry, we're going to paint the um, red areas with all red, which is another wash. Once you're done with this, you don't even have to wait for the red to dry, as long as it's not pooling anywhere. You can take some bad at black and what you're gonna do is um, lightly paint in to the creases the shadows and the pockets and where's my bad at black stage crew stage crew to dig my paint here we go bad at black So in the bag, anywhere where the shadows would naturally fall. Okay, then you're gonna wash off your brush. And while you still have the Bad Ab Black out, you're going to paint the boots, the metal and the leather. And we're just basically working our way up. We're hitting everything 
that needs to get the bad at black on it. So after the boots, we're gonna hit the belt buckle and the mace. back sides of everything like the boots then we're gonna hit the uh, the big bag of bones starting Pierce Brosnan and that guy from 90210 Jason Priestley who's all old and chubby now out some Devlin mud and with that we are going to paint his bandages on his arms Ogres are dirty, but these guys, these lead belchers, are the worst of the worst. And so that's why their equipment is usually rusting or really ill-equipped. Even these guys who are trying to emulate the em empire and their standards of cleanliness. Alright, I'm going to stop now, let that dry, and then we're going to uh, continue with the washes. Okay, next thing we're going to do is wash the cannon in Bata Black. As well as the gut plate. So at this point, everything should have at least one wash to it to dull the colors and tie them together. So I'm going to finish this and um, we'll show you what the next step is after I've let this one layer of wash dry. Right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a red wash, all red, to all of the um, tin bits areas that have already been darkened with Badab Black. So why red? I don't know, but that's what they put in the White Dwarf. Actually, I think it's to kind of bring out the um, the more reddish brown tones of the tin bits. I mean, obviously, but what that also does is it creates a good um, little tinge so that it's not just dark brown and black. You don't want the red to be overpowering though, so just make sure that spread it out so it kind of looks like an oxidized copper rather than a red color. There we go. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we are going to um, highlight the cannon with mithril silver. Now this is a little bit different from what I usually do which is if this was an empire cannon in a regular empire army then I would build the shining gold back up before adding this highlight but because of the way that it's being used like this ogre here just pretty much picked it up and started moving around with it, he's not really sure, he doesn't really know how to take good care of it. Um, it's gonna show. So that's why the Bedai Black makes it look like it's still pretty oily and beat up. Okay, and then at the end, the way I've got my light angle down right now I can 
see where the light is reflecting in a solid line down the barrel. So what I'm doing is I'm just spreading the mitral silver out over and it's going to create a little uh, optical illusion of light reflecting off that one area. There you go. You could also, if you don't have mitral silver or if you think the silver is too harsh, you could also achieve the same effect with burnished gold. Okay, next what we're going to do is we, um, I painted Chaos Black into his gut plate. So now I'm going to take some mitral silver and I'm going to line the edges of each of the golden teeth. At least the ones that I can reach inside there. And this is going to be achieving the same effect as the mitral silver on the cannon. up the belt buckle and pretty much I'm just touching up all of the silver that's already been washed. I'm just gonna highlight the silver. The hook here in the back. Okay, next what we're gonna do is we are going to next oh take the micro silver and now we're going to line an edge by now the tin bits red areas should be dried we are just going to edge each of the little tin bits plates if you use your tin bits and ball red wash on a knife or a weapon like my mace that I just had then you can also take time now to use micro silver on it. This one does not have to be clean at all because these are all scratched up plates of metal. that there must be a cat walking around outside. It's not Maki. Maki doesn't... We don't let him go outside anymore. He's a bad boy. Knocks all my warhammers down. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is, oh, sorry about that, we are going to add our patina to the cannon. And for that, we use watered down hawk turquoise. So 
for this you want to water down your paint but you really want to wipe off the majority of it you don't want a lot of paint on your brush and you don't want it to be thick let me show you what I'm doing here just lining Just make sure that when you're when you're lining that you drag out the paint. Oh sorry, let me get it in focus. There you go. And you don't want it to be too obvious, but that little flash of blue color is really what makes this technique stand out on the field. So just take some water. If you mess up, if, if your paint is too thick on your brush, just take some water and draw it out like I did there. Nobody will ever know. Except Ogre Jesus. And he's just happy that you're painting. Alright, so I'm finding every place where the gold is kind of edging out and popping out of the out of the rest of the cannon and I'm just lining my verdigris inside and there you have it so now what I'm gonna do is I am going to um, finish painting the verdigris into his gut plate and I'm going to um, cut the camera here because I'm running out of time and we'll go on to highlighting the flesh when we get back. What we're going to do now is paint in the eyes before we go any further so I'm just going to take a little bit of chaos black do a fine line of the black horizontally and um, in this particular head for this lead belcher he's got an eye patch so I'm only going to be doing the eye that he has left but obviously if he had both of his eyes I would be doing this for both of them then we're going to be taking our skull white and painting in over the for the black. Skull white, here we go. And you want to be careful when painting in your eyeballs for your miniatures because it's really easy to have too much paint on the brush. And then finally, take a little dab of paint and chaos black and then we're going to fix up any mistakes that we made and then paint a vertical slash. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to pause it pause this video and I'm going to fix up his eye because I was at a funny kind of angle for for painting it and then um, we're gonna move on to the other details all 
All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start working on the, the highlighting of the skin. And because of the lead belcher's nature to be around these giant cannons and all the soot and the buckshot of, uh, of, of the grape shot flying back at them, um, we don't need to worry too much about how nice they look. But this is an optional step that you can take if you want to. So all you really need to do is use talarn flesh and deneb stone to um, whatever whatever mixing level you feel comfortable with and use those to highlight the skin. So for example, I'm going to show you just a very tiny little bit of what I would do if um, I were painting a regular ogre or an ogre who was not um, a part of this lead belcher unit. You find big areas of muscle mass where the skin is showing and you just lightly, lightly feather like so. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit more of this around the model and then when I come back we're going to add the soot effect and start adding the final details. Okay, now what we're going to do is we are going to paint the lower eyes, lower part of the eyes as well as any rock jewelry. I already painted Fenris Grey onto this guy's earring. And um, if you have any stone ornaments or jewelry, then that's what you can paint them. You're also going to water it down a little bit and paint that Fenris Grey right under his eyelid. All these ogres have this baggy lid under their eyes where that is going to go. Okay, and then we're going to take dark flesh, water that down a lot, and then paint really, really thin down amount of dark flesh onto his lower lip. Ooh. So I just want to make sure it's in focus. There we go. It's a weird angle to be painting. down a little too much. going to do is we're going to paint the flame. So uh, you're going to take blood red first and you're going to paint from the top down almost all the way to the bottom. And leave some of that mech right red showing at the bottom. Like so. So you're gonna take some blazing orange, go a little bit higher than you just did. And stretch it all the way to the top. And with the blazing orange, you wanna start going in long, thin lines. You're gonna take some sunburst yellow, and now you're gonna paint just two or three lines, really thin, vertical, going up the sides. This is what's gonna create the illusion of flame. And you're gonna be painting this over the blazing orange. Here we go.
we go. Okay, I'm gonna pause for a bit, clean that up, and then when we get back, we will move on to the um, blackening of the cannon barrel. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus on the barrel because I've got a dry brush full of watered down um, chaos black, and we're just going to dab it around the edges. Sides. I also want to get the inside of the barrel as well. And then start wiping off your dry brush the higher up the barrel you go so that it gets lighter. take some a sermon blue and we're going to use a regular brush and we're going to paint the a sermon blue around the barrel in a ring we're also going to take a little bit of that and we're going to paint the stone jewelry dry and then when we come back we are going to wrap up I'm gonna do the basing and get to work on the uh, the gut plate and then I'll show you what I did when we get back I'm just going to use um, some mechrite red to make the banner my micron 0 0.005 pen and um, some blood red and that should be it so we'll see you in the last part of the video all right so now what we're gonna do is we're going to highlight up the the earpiece, the earring, and any of the other stone jewelry that you have. So just take a little bit of the fortress gray paint and put it on the edge of an old brush that you don't really um, need to do precise work anymore that you can kind of mess up. And then what I do is I drag it along my, um, my hand to take off most of the paint and then I just lightly dry brush that fortress gray onto the edges of the um, the earring and the other pieces of stone. This is what I did for the female man-eater for all of her pieces of jewelry and this is what I do for for this guy right now. I took, um, I decided not to use Mechrite Red for the label. I decided to go with more of a brown and cream colored kind of parchment and I hand wrote in with my 0 .005 micron pen Long Tom because I think with the red and the red of the bag it might have been, there might have been too much red uh, all in one area. Plus two, looking at the model like this now, you your eye is really drawn to the red bag as well as the flames off of the matchstick. So there you go, that just about finishes the um, lead belcher model except for the pièce de résistance which is the soot for the body. Now what I did for this with my other lead belcher which I'm going to show you right now is I just took some Chaos Black Put it on the edge of my dry brush and wiped off the majority of it and then um, and then dry brushed it over where the cannons um, blow back would be so so around here where all the black powder would 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 shoot out the back by his eyes and his face and the side of his face around his fingers and his hands um, mostly so that's what we're gonna do with this model really quickly is just put some chaos black onto the tip of our brush wipe off the majority of it and then when we feel like we've got a good amount left start with the hands because then if you have a lot then um, then it, it makes sense rather than being closer to 
your guy's shoulder or uh, away from the machine. So you get rid of a lot of the black right there. And we focus more in the recesses. So it's really simple, really fun, and it's a great way to reward yourself after spending so long um, painting, painting your guy. It's a really great way to, to, to dirty him up um, and keep him characterful. So I'm going to base the model now. I'm going to put uh, my flocking and paint the rim and do all that stuff. And then we really will wrap up the video for Long Tom and his tutorial right after this. And there you have it players, a fully painted and based up lead belcher using my technique. Hopefully more of the, um, or most of the, the tutorial was able to be seen. Um, I'm sorry for any times where the camera got out of focus or when the model even went out of frame. I'm still getting kind of used to this new setting of a uh, camera setup, but, but I think it came out pretty well. I hope you liked them. And if you have any questions, then please feel free to ask, leave a comment, send me a PM. Um, I'll try to help out as much as I can. I'm always trying to improve my technique and, and everything that I'm doing here. So thanks for all the support. Uh, again, you can follow me on uh, theogrestronghold.com. Follow my ogre project there. You can also follow my blog where I'll be doing all sorts of stuff. Um, not just ogres, but um, you know the new vampire counts, some 40k stuff, some skaven uh, coming up in the works. So a whole bunch of stuff there, here, there, everywhere. Uh, I've got a lot of stuff. That, that I can still get to. So thanks for watching. Hope you liked it. And um, I don't know, Lewis, what do you think? I like it. Latest players. <laughs>